Have you ever wanted to find out how you can control an entire house of lights with just two of these $15 controllers? We're going to cover that in today's Bites of Pie video. Welcome back to Bites of Pie. Yes, it's true. This past year in 2021, we were able to control our entire house of lights with just two of these $15 controllers. This is the WT32ETH01 microcontroller. We purchased this on Amazon for about $15, and it is a powerhouse for a microcontroller. A lot of the houses you'll see have the fancy controllers like a Falcon controller or a uh, Lights Light Rama controller, or a lot of the sophisticated controllers will run you about $300 for the major board, maybe two to $300 if you want to uh, do it yourself, and then about you know, 50 or so dollars for each little uh, extension board. And that'll kind of run you a lot of money. Uh, what uh, started our project essentially started way back in 2016 through 2017, where our first project was uh, controlling a regular tree of lights with just regular LED lights, not smart lights, but using uh, relays to turn on and off using a controller, a, mic uh, a Raspberry Pi, to control uh, solid state relays on and off, which would then control uh, an outlet on and off and turn off lights on our tree. We have some videos uh, in our uh, backlog that'll show you that project. That Christmas tree project led to a different project, which was a, a smart pixel light suit that we did for my daughter. And she was able to use that in a Cincinnati Blink, which is a festival in the Cincinnati area every so many years where you can the entire community comes out and has a whole bunch of uh, lit up projects out on, out on the Cincinnati streets and you can walk it. So she had her own street. Again, we have some more videos to that. And in that, um, I programmed a microcontroller, well, not, not a, a ETH01, but uh, another uh, ESP32 controller, which was uh, wireless and Bluetooth, uh, used Bluetooth low energy to communicate with a, uh, an Android app that I wrote. So you could control the suit and the different patterns that it had. It controlled a full set cape along with lights that circled around her arms and her legs. And all of that was powered off of two 5-volt batteries. Now, I, we thought if we could do that with two 5-volt batteries and a, a microcontroller, what could we do with an entire house? So that started our project on, in 2021. We weren't quite sure it was going to work, and we tried some, had some trials and errors. We tried the regular ESP32 microcontroller uh, to, power, to run the show. But that wasn't uh, because it was running off of wireless and it didn't have a, an, an Ethernet jack like this one does. Communication to the controller was slow. You could see the the song would go the song would be played through the the Falcon Pi player or the FPP, but it wouldn't uh, synchronize with the lights. So we had to change up and go with this. Now we're going to walk you through uh, what it is behind the scenes for that show and how we built it together. We're also going to highlight some of the interesting features. Some of them are, are necessary, like the signal booster that we have, uh, but some of them are not necessary, like the additional things we have, like with a time time delay switch and also with home automation. So, if you're interested, come follow me. Before we get started on the hardware tour, I need to mention why microcontrollers can be used as controllers for your light show. That's all because of the open source software WLED flashed onto the microcontroller. It is a very powerful web-based user interface that allows you to control your lights even without a show running. You can run your lights with a, a ton of different color palettes. You can run a whole bunch of already out-of-the-box effects, set up favorites that you'd like, and a ton of other different options. The real power of this actually came about in April 2021 with the build of 0.12.0 Hikari, and it added three different features that make this a good addition to your home show. The first is it supported multiple pins. Before the 12 build, you can only control one set of lights from one output pin. With this build, you can actually control uh, multiple pins. Here you can see I have two pins on pin four and pin two where I control a different set of the lights. The second thing, is that you can split them into segments. You can actually set up, rather than controlling a single stream, if I control the first 200 on the first pin, I can add another segment and control the next 400 on the next segment. I can run different patterns on different segments. And the last final feature it introduced is actual support for ethernet boards rather than just wireless boards. That gives you the power for delivering data quickly and displaying it fast. Now, how do I turn this from a self-sufficient controller into a part of your light show? That all comes down to this sync interfaces where it actually acts as an E131 controller. And you can see this here in this setting. What you need to do is add this IP address to your Falcon Pi player or to your X-Lights scheduler. 
and it's another node that can be controlled with E131 data. As you can tell from the shows on this channel, it's pretty powerful. Starting the tour of our light show is the center or the brains of the show, which compose, is composed of three different pieces. You have a router and you have your radio transmitter and inside the box is the Raspberry Pi. The router is a self-contained network. It's separate from my home network. That way all the network traffic is isolated. We have uh, the radio transmitter, which transmits the show's music or sound out to the audience. And inside is the Raspberry Pi into this box. Now, the router and the Raspberry Pi are always on. They are hooked to this, the box's power supply. I have a little switch here so I can easily turn it on and off without having to get into the box. But the radio transmitter is on a timer. That way, I'm only transmitting during the times of the show. The router is connected to the Raspberry Pi through this cable, goes into the box, and the Pi is then connected to the transmitter from the audio jack of the Pi through this cable here. Now, if I'm going to take these out, and you can actually see the, the Raspberry Pi. It's fairly, fairly simple. There's a, lot addition, there's a lot more in this box than is necessary. If I open up the box, you can see that a power strip is mounted inside the box, and the actual Pi that drives the show is this guy here. So you can see the network cable in and the audio jack. Now, all this additional stuff over here with the solid state relays and the other Raspberry Pis for the other project that we're not using this year. Everything is wired. So the data from the show goes out to uh, two Ethernet jacks that I installed here and then out into the garage. The second part of the tour is the boxes that actually control the lights. They have the controllers within them. The Show, the first time the show has two boxes. We only have two sets of controllers. One is in the smaller box here. This is our permanent setup with the roof line. We're not going to take those that down. And then we have the larger set, which is the windows and the doors and the matrix. And that's all in the larger box here. And we'll go through both of them. Well, first off is the CG1500 box. Uh, for those that are familiar with the hobby or familiar with this type of box, it's a smaller box, so you can't really cram in a lot of components. Uh, my entire show is a 5 volt show, so that means I can power both the microcontroller and all the different components as well as the lights all in the same voltage. So I don't have to worry about having a one power supply for the lights, like a 12 volt power supply, and then a 5 volt for the, con the controller. Everything is self-contained. Now, you notice here that the network jack is physical, that the controller that I'm using is a WT32ETH01 controller. Most of the microcontrollers all are wireless. They are primarily connect to the internet through Wi-Fi. However, when I tried to run the show off of wireless, the uh, images would come, you know, seconds after the music and it was poorly timed. But when I purchased the WT32ETH01 and I hooked it up physically, it was much, much faster. And I'll have links to that within the video below. Now, this is a, a power off of 5 volts. And one of the things I also found out, the other thing that's unique to my show, is this component here. And that component is an NE555 5 volt delay timer relay switch. Well, what, essentially what it is, is as soon as this power supply turns on, the power goes to this delay switch and the timer kicks off. It doesn't automatically power this directly. It waits for about eight seconds and then it turns on the power to the supply. Now, when I first hooked it directly to the power supply, I found that periodically not turn on. It would actually kind of slowly gauge up and it would not actually turn the, the microcontroller on. I guess when I measured it, it kind of slowly built the voltage up to five and that wasn't ideal for the actual controller. So what I did is I purchased this, I purchased a pack of six of these, which essentially allowed the, the, the power supply to warm up. So it would turn, it would turn on and start the timer for, uh, turn, I set it to eight seconds before it would actually allow the power to go through. And I found that once I put that on, it worked every time. The next part of this is this little blue guy you'll see here. This is a level converter. If you're familiar with the hobby, you know that the data signal sometimes degrades, and the farther your lights get away from your controller, you'll see your lights kind of flicker on and off. Well, that's because the data signal is coming in on a 3-volt line, and the 3-volt data signal degrades really easily. So what in order they do, what some people do is they put a, a single pixel in here to boost it to a 5-volt signal, and they just don't use it closer to the controller. The other thing, the other way to do it is this way, using a, a level converter. You'll notice that I have the data signal coming out from the controller. I have three different pins that they're, it's 
map to, and they go right to this level converter. On this side, you'll notice that there's a 3 volt. All the 3 volt data signal comes in, and it's boosted to 5 volts on the left hand side coming out. And that's what travel, the data signal travels at 5 volts out through the pigtails. All the data is protected by this switch box. So again, the, the hot line comes in, and I have automotive uh, fuses here. But they're both, they're all, you can see they're all three fused at 10 volts. And I also, just for safety's sake, I have the controller fused at 5 volts. Now we'll make our way over to the larger box. Now that we go to the larger box, you can see that it's a, an ammo case here. It allows for a, a larger uh, set of components. If I open this up, get some light in here. Okay. You'll see that underneath, I'll kind of view it here. If I scroll down, you'll notice that I have two uh, power supplies stacked on top. I won't get into that just, just yet, but underneath, you'll see the two uh, five volt power supplies. They're stacked one on top of the other. And down here, the power cable that's coming in, this is another unique feature, is powered by a Sonoff, uh, Sonoff Basic. You'll see down there. So essentially that's uh, hooked into the into home automation. So essentially I can schedule, I can turn my lights on and off if I'm remote. You'll also see uh, this is a very similar setup. You have the delay, the, the time delay that allows it to kind of, allows the power supply to kind of warm up. The level converter, which will boost the three volt signal into five volt out through here. I have a fuse box. This is different, which is, I think is better. Uh, the other, the other block that I had has one power coming from one, one power, uh, cable coming from the power supplies here. I can have separate, uh, 14 gauge wires, uh, coming straight from the power supply. So I don't necessarily have to have one 12. I can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coming from different sp spots on the different, uh, power supplies. We had the delay, we had the level converter, we have the actual uh, WT32. Uh, if you notice here, I have a right angle uh, ethernet connector. And that's a right angle ethernet connector out here to this uh, gland. I have a, an ethernet gland here that's protected. So when I don't have it hooked to, hooked to a, an ethernet cable, it can be protected here. And again, it's watertight. I can just uh, hook it in here. There's a, a, a gland that fits over top of it to make sure it's a, a waterproof connection when I do hook it up. And this, just, this is just a dust cover to make sure that no dust gets in there or no water. Again, you have the same, same cable glands that most people are familiar with. You have the three, three prong connector. And I, each of these is connected to this uh, screw terminals. So you can see that we have one, two, three uh, data lines coming again. We also have uh, power injection. And I have two pieces here. You'll notice right here on this side is just power. It's a uh, uh, line and neutral, line and neutral. And they come out to here. Now you'll notice uh, on, my on my set, uh, I have, I'm using these MUI connectors. And these are much cheaper. They're about like a dollar a, a dollar connector, where these are a little more expensive for these, these uh, pigtails. I'm using regular wire, and I'm... Uh, do the MUYI. Again, I'll have links in the description below for these particular connectors. Uh, overall, that's uh, an overview of the light show. Thanks for watching.